Hello, students. I'm your professor. My name is Lauren Geithner, and I just want to talk about a couple points in terms of what we're covering during this quarter. Welcome to Introduction to Ethics. So what the heck is ethics, and how is it different from morality? They are related, but they're not identical. Well, before we talk about what is ethics, we, I think we have to talk about what is the distinction between philosophy and religion. Ethics, after all, is an important school of thought in the context of um, philosophy. So, ethics talks about what is correct behavior. Morality also talks about what is correct behavior. Where is the distinction? Well, there is such. And I think we find the start of that distinction with an important distinction between um, religion and ethics. And I speak with some authority in this context because although I have a BA in philosophy, I have a master's degree in religion. Now, the two fields are closely related, but uh, there's an important distinction. Now, here's the problem. Philosophers, if you go to, if you ever have the opportunity to go to a conference where a bunch of philosophy professors are meeting, and why would you want to? Uh, but if you want to be a total troll and get people upset, here's the question to ask. What is philosophy? Similarly, if you want to be a total troll at a conference or a symposium of religion scholars, you ask, what is religion? Yes, there's the irony. The, both of these are fields in the humanities, but both of them, there have been debates going back hundreds if not thousands of years about what constitutes philosophy versus what constitutes uh, religion. Well, let me offer a fairly standard definition. Now, some schools of philosophy might disagree, but this is pretty commonly accepted. What do we mean by philosophy? A standard three-part definition. Philosophy is the attempt to address points or ideas that are important to the human experience. Second, these ideas have to be things that are not amenable to empirical investigation. What is truth? What is beauty? Can we identify beauty? Can it be measured? No. Well, that's the difference between science and philosophy. Mind you, some Philosophy is often called the mother of the sciences because most of the major fields of endeavor of science have branched off of philosophy. Most recently, psychology. In the late 18, early 1900s, psychology was considered a school of philosophy. It was not regarded as a form of science because people had not yet figured out ways to try to measure um, human thought and understanding objectively. So, so philosophy addresses important points about the human experience. It tries to address points that are not amenable to empirical investigation. And if it's amenable to empirical investigation, you have science, not philosophy. And number three, philosophy tries to do that by use of reason. Now, let me personally add a slight caveat, and uh, it might be, mark me as um, having a minority opinion here, but I lean towards the understanding of philosophy that comes from Whiteheadian metaphysics. And Alfred North Whitehead argued that yes, reason was important, but he also thought there was value to intuition. 
But that said, he also set out some rather strict standards. He thought that you should be aware of and listen to your intuition, but when you had an intuitive insight that you should weigh it against things, standards such as whether or not your insight um, was coherent, whether your insight was logical or rational, and whether or your insight provided greater explanatory powers than the prior understanding. So, standard definition of philosophy, important question about the human experience. It must not be amenable to empirical investigation. And number three, the primary tool is reason. Although I and my fellow Whiteheadians would also add intuition has a role to play with that. So what is religion? And how are they related? And how are they different? Well, here's the deal. Religion also looks at important questions of the human experience. Why are we alive? What is the goal of life? What, why does anything matter? The profound questions about life are also addressed by religion. But, important distinction, Religion, yes, sometimes includes philosophy. The writings of St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas, great Christian theologians, are considered both philosophy and theology. They fall into a gray area there. But how do we solve these important questions about the human experience? Whereas philosophy only looks at reason and perhaps intuition. Um, religion includes other things such as mythology, mythos. And do we take these stories literally or figuratively or symbolically? It looks at things like ritual, things like doctrine or um, community, less frequently. Um, long and short, both religion and philosophy are ultimately addressing the same issues. But religion, and part of the reason why I pursued a graduate degree in religion, is that it has a much larger toolbox, so to speak, than philosophy. So, how does that relate to the difference between morals and ethics? Well, here's the thing. What is moral? Well, a large part of that is a matter of the key term is this, received authority. What is the received authority? Well, common social norms of one received authority. For example, I am from the Midwest, but I live in California. And up until this recent crisis that we're experiencing, I often ran up against the conflict because my training and my default socially when meeting people I would not encountered before was to shake hands. But here in California, the default typically is for people who've never been met before to hug each other, oh, who've never been comfortable with that. So. In Illinois, it would be at least awkward, if not immoral, for you to hug someone that you are just meeting. Whereas in California, someone goes in for a hug and you extend your hand, it's like, oh, what's going on? This is what's called social norms. And they vary not only from time to time and place to place, but even within the same country. The other major f basis for morals is religion. And part of what you get when you belong to a religion, with one or two important examples, is that um, we are being joined. I am, I am sorry, but we are being joined by my free TA how we call her Lady Miss Percival Striping. So please put up with this. That's the problem of trying to teach from home. So 
cats do not appreciate boundaries. Just saying. Um, so, here's the thing. Morals are usually from received authority. The, that received authority can be either social norms or they can be religious. But they are kind of black and white. Yes, kitty. Um, you, should, you should not lie. You should honor your parents. Um, you should not commit adultery. Things like that. But, um... Sorry, she's trying to decide whether to jump off my lap or not. And there she goes. Thank goodness. So, morality is about received authority. It comes from outside and enters in. Ethics. Ethics is based on reason. Uh, so far, we've already covered Kant's theory of ethics. One, mind you, he referred to it as his first attempt at the metaphysics of morals. Uh, the usage has changed since then. So, Kant um, starts off his epic work about morality slash ethics by making some pretty straightforward and intuitive observations about human nature. And then he applies Aristotelian logic to those observations. And by doing so, he arrives at certain basic principles about what is proper behavior. There's the thing. He's applying Aristotelian logic, reason, to this important question. And his observations about what is proper behavior are based not on received authority. It's not like such and such was written on a clay tablet on the peak of Mount Sinai. No. These are certain basic principles about human nature and human behavior, and we apply Aristotelian logic, and therefore we arrive at a conclusion. That isn't morals, it's ethics, and it's an important distinction. There's the thing, and uh, something that a lot of people don't understand. If we look at Webster's Dictionary, the definitions of ethics and morals are pretty much the same. But in the field of philosophy, there is an important distinction. Is your view based on received authority, external authority, or is it based on reason? If it's based on reason, then if you have a conflict between two different norms, you have a tool, you have a means to resolve that conflict. And welcome then. You are now doing ethics, not morals. Therefore, let me just observe that, um, and to sum up, the difference between philosophy and religion is that they both try to address the important questions of life, but philosophy does so mostly through reason, also maybe a little bit of intuition, whereas um, religion uses a lot of different other tools, ritual, doctrine, ceremony, community. And you're not really doing ethics so long as you are merely uh, citing received authority. Rather, it only becomes ethics when you address and use and apply reason, also a little bit of intuition, I think, uh, to address these important questions. So, sorry folks, I'd been planning to record this message uh, last week, but with the coronavirus and with two of my classes at Chapman University suddenly having to be transitioned to being online, I'm sorry, I didn't have the time. That said, there's the important distinction. 
This is a class in philosophy. It's not a class in religion, although I am a scholar of religion. And what, we're, uh, what we are studying, what we're looking at, is ways to attempt to grapple with what, how we can rationally define what is correct behavior. And that's the difference between ethics versus morals. Morals are important, but there's the interesting thing. You can be effectively ethical without being moral. If you read Kant's works on ethics and you say, oh, that makes sense to me, and you follow his teachings, for example, you're being ethical. If, even if you're an atheist, whereas morals, if you belong to a religion that has a moral system, and not all religions have embedded morality. Most, but not all. If you belong to a religion that has morals, and you accept those morals as a matter of your belief in that religion, but you never think to question or challenge it, or try to weigh one norm against another, eh, I need to break this to you. You might be moral, but you're not ethical. It's an important distinction. So, the first couple of weeks has been presenting you material that is help, meant to help you internalize the distinction between morals and ethics. And that is a crucial distinction between scholarship that is based on philosophy versus religion. Now, I kind of crossed the divide. I have a bachelor's in philosophy, but a master's in religion. Um, and as I've mentioned, they are related. But there's an important distinction. And if you can't support your arguments for an ethical position on the basis of reason, primarily. Uh, sorry, you're not doing ethics at that point. You're doing morals. Related, but different and distinct. So, have I clarified these issues or have I just succeeded in making you even more confused? You are the only one who can tell me. So, Announcement two for introduction to ethics. Welcome, and please try to apply these ideas in the material that we will be covering henceforth. Ciao.